doing incredibly well. I know I say this like every time I post a video, but it has been a hot minute. <laughs> Filming just has not been a priority lately, but anyway. Thank you for still being here even though I don't post regularly. I really appreciate it. So obviously I'm here for a thrifted book haul. Very excited. I'll also be showing like three or four books that I got that aren't thrifted at the end, but I'm just really, really excited about the books that I thrifted. Some of them are ones that I've been wanting for a while and others I didn't know existed, but I'm still excited about it. <laughs> I know this isn't a super interesting background for filming, but my next video is going to be a partial living room makeover. I've never done any videos for like our house before. Um, I know that like one of the very first videos we ever posted, we had just bought this house and the kitchen was like torn to pieces, like torn up. And we had just gotten Rogan, so I was just showing him as a little puppy, but we haven't done like any videos to showcase what we've done. But my next video I will be showing a little bit, which I'm very, very excited about. <sighs> I'm so excited. I'm putting up new living room shelves, basically like a home library. It's not going to be anything super like extravagant, but I'm very excited. We painted the living room last week and we stained the shelves last night and I'm just so pumped. So I will be showing you that and some new decor and it's just all very exciting. So. Anyway, for the meantime, I'm going to show you these thrifted books that will be sitting on those shelves. Okay, so I'm just going to hop right in so that this video isn't three hours long like all of my other ones. So first up is The Magician's Nephew by C.S. Lewis. And I know everybody has this book, but I really just like finding different versions of books that I already have. I think I have one other version of this, but I really want to find like the older the better. You know what I mean? But obviously this is the first in the Chronicles of Narnia series and I've actually never read this one. So I'm very, very excited to get into it because C.S. Lewis just speaks to my soul on a whole other level and I just cannot recommend his books enough. I love them so much. If you've been here for a while, you know that last year I read The Screwtape Letters and Mere Christianity and they were both just like life-changing. Ugh, loved them so much. So yes. Very excited to dig into this series. The next one that I got still has the price tag on it and also has a bookmark in it. So I'm sure you can guess. I got The Return of the King by Tolkien and I don't like books that have like real people on the cover. I usually avoid those at all costs, but it's Viggo Mortensen, so like you can't be against it. It's Aragorn. It's Aragorn. You know, like I just I had to get it. And yes, it was only a dollar. So that was definitely, wow. So that was definitely a steal. But I don't know. I just like I said, I feel like C.S. Lewis and Tolkien are like the two authors that I'm just gonna buy like any version that I see of their books because they're just incredible. And I have not read Lord of the Rings yet. I know I'm such a poser. But I did read The Hobbit last year and I absolutely loved it. So that's exciting. Sorry if you hear my phone buzzing. My brother keeps sending me TikToks. <laughs> the next book that I got was Emma by Jane Austen. I've never seen this version before so I had to snag it and I think I have one other version of this that I also thrifted last year and yes only $1.50 so another steal but I have no idea what this is about so like I am I have no idea what any Jane Austen book is about at all. I know that Pride and Prejudice has Mr. Darcy and Elizabeth Bennet, and that's literally all I know about the Jane Austen world. Obviously it's Regency time period, which I'm currently reading my first Regency in Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater and I'm loving it so much. But anyway, yeah, I have no idea. I They're romance books, right? I'm pretty sure. But this also has the serrated edges, which I was very excited about. I love that feature on books. Like I'm very likely to get the book just because it has serrated edges on it. So I really like this version. I thought it was really sweet and it is a little bit textured too. It's not like super duper textured, but you can feel the, the picture on it. My dogs run into the camera every time I sit down and film. You just gonna lay right there? Okay. He's just like laying underneath it now. He's officially annoyed of me and all my drama because he was laying on the couch earlier and I like come up to him like this and I usually like lay on him and hug him and he saw me coming and the second I touched the couch he got up and walked away. <laughs> up next is another Tolkien book. I'll stay on theme here and it is The Two Towers. <laughs> Look at this cover. <laughs> Do you see 80s hair going on here. I could not pass this up. I couldn't. 
I simply could not. I saw that and I, I just, I had to, I had to. This cover is hilarious. Like that, that's Legolas and Gimli. I just, I can't. <laughs> and yeah, so adding this one to my collection because I, I couldn't, I could not get it. <laughs> The next book that I got is a pretty popular one in the bookish world. Um, when I first started to learn, or like when I first learned that the bookish community was a thing, it was a YouTube channel that I found and she was currently reading this book. So this book was like one of my first ex ex expositions, exposures. This book was like my first exposure to the bookish world. Oh, I graduated high school, I swear. And that's Orphan Island by Laurel Snyder. This book just sounds really, really sweet. And I feel like it's going to really get me up in my feels. And I'm really excited about it. When the nine children go to sleep in their cabins, it is with full stomachs and joy in their hearts. And only one thing ever changes. On that day each year, when a boat appears from the mist upon the ocean, carrying one young child to join them and taking the eldest one away, never to be seen again. Oh gosh, yeah. So basically, as you can hear, it just sounds very emotional. And obviously it's supposed to be like an allegory for growing up and letting go of parts of your childhood to embrace adulthood and adjusting to new friendships and... It's gonna be an emotional roller coaster for me, so I'm excited, but I'm also kind of nervous. And obviously, I did not take the tags off of any of these books. Another dollar fifty-one. I have a hard time paying for books full price now. <laughs> now that I can find them for this cheap, especially when they're like more popular ones like this. The next up is one that I was probably most excited about, I think, because it's another Francine Rivers book. And if you've seen my Redeeming Love vlog, you know that Francine Rivers is just like my hero. Like after I read Redeeming Love, I just binged a bunch of interviews with her and I subscribed to her newsletter. I stalked her website and I just, I just absolutely adore this woman so much. She's so wonderful and just lovely and pure. And she's one of those people that I'm like, I want to sit in a garden with you and let you pour into me and just talk and chat about life. And I just, yeah. I absolutely love that woman, appreciate her so much, and I got her book, The Last Sin Eater, for a dollar. I don't even really know what this is about, I never really do. In the misty peaks and valleys of Appalachia, ooh, spooky, roams the sin eater, a myth as much as a man, burdened with absolving the sins of villagers passing from this life to the next. Oh, I've heard of this kind of a thing. I first heard of this in a show, Outlander, which as I mentioned, I cannot recommend because it is very inappropriate, but if you subscribe to like that one service that like skips all of the icky scenes for you, then I highly recommend it. <laughs> um, but there was somebody in there called the Sin Eater and I didn't understand what that was because I'd never heard of it before. So I'm actually familiar with this concept, but when a young girl uncovers the dark secret behind the tradition, she vows to show her village the truth. All that matters for 10-year-old Katie Forbes is finding the one man who can free her from the sin that plagues her day and night. The sin that has stolen her mother's love and made Katie wish she could flee life and its terrible injustice. She knows it's forbidden that doing so will bring curses down upon her, but something deep and instinctive moves her against all dire warnings to find the Sin Eater. Before their journeys are over, Katie and the Sin Eater must face themselves, each other, and the one who will demand all from them in exchange for the answer they seek. Gosh, I... I just love Francine Rivers. Her stories are just, ugh. I've only read one, but even just reading the descriptions of some of them that I have, I'll show you later, I did get more <laughs> in this one. It's just, ugh, I don't know. She just does something to me, you know? I feel like she's just like my author that I have. <laughs> I feel like everybody has that one author they're that they're like, will go to bat for. And I think Francine Rivers is my person. <laughs> so I'm really excited to read this one. I don't know if I'll get to it this year. I might, but I do have quite a packed TBR and I'm trying to get better at DNFing things so I can read things that I really enjoy. So we'll see, but I'm really excited that I got another one of her books and I thrifted it for a dollar. Such a steal. The next book is a religious book. Actually, let me do the next three books are religious books and then I have just a few left and then I'll show you the new books that I got. So up next is by an author and pastor that I have come to absolutely adore and respect so much. He is quite popular. He got popular around the pandemic a few years ago and I'm so grateful that he got 
a lot of publicity because it has brought a lot of people to his ministry and I think he is absolutely incredible. I know that a lot of people have issues with him but I personally have never heard anything from him that I disagree with or found to be unbiblical. So anyway, I'm very excited about this one and I can't wait to read some of his work and I do have a few other books from him that I also thrifted as well. So this one is The Gospel According to the Apostles by John MacArthur. And I think the title is kind of self-explanatory, but what he covers in this book is what is cheap grace? Have some Christians adopted a no lordship theology? What must a person do to be considered righteous by God? And do your works have any effect on your salvation? So big questions and I'm really excited to get the answers from Mr. MacArthur's perspective. I think I shared in my last book haul that I got his book, The Gospel According to Jesus. Maybe I didn't, maybe I never did a video for it, but I did do another thrifted book haul quite a while ago. Oh my gosh, did I do a video for that? I can't remember. Regardless, that book was in there, The Gospel According to Jesus, which is like his most famous book. I think it was his first one too, and he's written like over 400 books, I think, which is pretty incredible. So really excited to finally read his work. I tend to kind of put off theology books after I get them because I just, it kind of freaks me out because in my past I've had a lot of like religious trauma and such, which I hate saying because it's so cliche, but I kind of just wait until I feel moved to read them because I don't want to force myself to get into something that I am not prepared for. So anyway, I won't get too into that because I can talk about that for a long time. Okay. Next book is The Invisible Hand, Do All Things Really Work for Good by R.C. Sproul. And with R.C. Sproul, there are just a small handful of things that he views that I disagree with, theologically speaking, but overall I do really appreciate the way he presents the gospel and he is theologically in line with most of um, what I believe. And I know that John MacArthur has also had like interviews with him or panels with him and stuff too. So I'm really curious to know his perspective on some things because I've never read any of his books. And I'm not sure if I've listened to like his full messages before. I've heard like snippets of them and read things by him, but never like a full book or listened to a full sermon. So I'm really excited to hear his perspective because I've heard a lot of really good things about him. So this will be a good one. Not sure if I'll get to it this year. Again, like I said, I'll see where the spirit leads me and <laughs> just go by that. In this thought-provoking book, acclaimed author R.C. Sproul shows how, since the beginning of time, the providence of God, the invisible hand that governs the universe with perfect intentionality, has worked for the good of those who love him. Uh, it's a little bit longer, but basically I'm sure you kind of can get the gist from the title. And then the last religious book, I think, yeah, is 50 Reasons Why Jesus Came to Die by John Piper. John Piper has a very interesting mind. I have listened to quite a few panels with him and interviews with him. John MacArthur has also done panels with him and there are definitely things that I disagree with as far as John MacArthur goes, I'm sorry, as far as John Piper goes. I know that he has kind of gone a little bit progressive in some of his theology with some things from my understanding, but overall I do think that he has pretty stable theology in most areas. Uh, I know that John MacArthur has called him out publicly on some of the things that he said that he disagreed with, but I do think that he still believes and presents the gospel for what it is. So I'm really excited to read this one because I do have another book by him that I read many, many years ago. Don't really remember a whole lot of it, but I have grown and changed so much, especially in my theology over the last few years. So I'm curious to know how I take some of the things that he says. And I think that as a theologian, I feel like it's kind of hard to screw up writing about why Jesus came to die. Is that okay to say? So anyway, I'm excited. <laughs> Next is another fiction book. I definitely consider this a cover buy. <laughs> and I did not pay for what the sticker says. I think I paid like a dollar for this one. And it is Blood Sisters by Jane Corey. Three little girls set off to school one sunny morning and within an hour one of them was dead. Fifteen years later, Kitty can't speak and has no memory of the accident that's to blame. She lives in an institution unlikely ever to leave, but that doesn't keep her from being frightened when she encounters an eerily familiar face. Our teacher Allison looks fine on the surface, but the surface is a lie. She's struggling to make ends meet and to forget the past. When a teaching job at a prison opens up, she takes it despite her fears. Maybe this is her chance to set things right. 
Then she starts to receive alarming notes. Next, her classroom erupts in violence. Meanwhile, someone is watching both Kitty and Allison. Someone who never forgot what happened that day. Someone who wants revenge and only another life will do. That sounds really fun. I love thrillers. I love murder mystery stuff. I just, it keeps me on the edge and really like just keeps you going, you know? That was also kind of the first books that I read when I started to read fiction again was all thrillers. So I'm very excited to actually get into thrillers again. I have a few planned for the fall as well. So very much looking forward to that. Plus it's a very like fall-ish themed cover. So maybe I'll save this for then. The next one is so cool. <laughs> I've never actually read this story. I'm sure a lot of us probably haven't because we had the movie growing up. But that is The Adventures of Robin Hood by Paul Cresswick. I had a hard time reading that font for a second. Isn't it beautiful? It does have this little kid's name written in it from 1991. But I don't mind. Maybe I'll put another sticker over it or something. But it is so precious. I absolutely love the titles and like the fonts and stuff and then of course it is illustrated. There's not like a ton of artwork in it but every few pages you've got a really beautiful masterpiece and I just thought this was such a stunning book and I couldn't pass it up and it's in such great condition especially being from 1991 which was before I was born actually. Um, none of the pages are ripped or anything, but anyway, yeah, I'm really excited about it. I think it's such a beautiful addition. Maybe I'll read this sometime. Maybe I'll just have it to look at and give it to my future children. Who knows? But it's a beautiful book and I'm very excited about it. The next two books are by the same author that I have heard very, very good things about. Um, Francine Rivers recommends her. They've done interviews together, so I'm really excited to finally read her books. Like I said, nothing but good things. And it's Karen Kingsbury, and I got The Baxter Family Coming Home, A Story of Undying Hope, which sounds beautiful. Oh, was not expecting that on the back. <laughs> and again, I don't even really know what this one is about. I just saw that Francine Rivers recommends her, so I decided to pick it up. And I don't even think there's a synopsis on it, so... <laughs> and then the other book that I got by her is The Chance. And I really like this cover, but like I said, these are mostly just because Francine Rivers recommends Karen Kingsbury. And I've seen her recommended quite a bit in Christian uh, fiction circles of women who want to read, of course, appropriate literature. And Karen Kingsbury is always recommended. And apparently her books are really emotional, so I'm kind of curious to see what these do to me. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is definitely going to be a romance that tears my heart out. Oh my gosh. The end of the synopsis says, for both Ellie and Nolan, the coming date is more than just a childhood promise. It's a chance to make sense of it all, the chance to find out if it's ever too late for love. <laughs> Kingsbury weaves a tale of heart-wrenching loss, the power of faith, and the wounds that only love can heal. She delves deeply into a theme that resonates with us all. It's never too late for those willing to take a chance. Oh gosh. I don't know if I'm ready for that. <laughs> So maybe I'll save those ones for next year because 2024 has been a hard year so far and I don't know if I'm ready for any kind of literature that's just going to emotionally destroy me. So we'll see. So the last two books that I thrifted before I show you some of my purchases are The Hunger Games. I got the first one and then I got Mockingjay. I don't know which one the Mockingjay is. Is it the second one or is it the third one? I have no idea. But I have never read these books before, so I'm really excited because I really actually enjoy the story, which is a big deal because I don't typically like dystopian stuff. Like anything futuristic just isn't my vibe. I'd rather read about the past and <laughs> vintagey times and stuff like that. So I don't know. I'm curious to see if I actually like the books. The only other dystopian story that I love, which I've also never read the books of, but I love the movies, is of course Divergent. But I just really like The Hunger Games and Divergent because I feel like those systems speak so true to like our society. Like, I don't know how anybody can read this and not like kind of low-key see our own government. <laughs> so, but I'm also a conspiracy theorist. So there's that. Okay, so the next books are new ones that I have either purchased or gotten gifted. The first two were gifts. 
and I'm so excited about them. They're from my friend Kayleen, whom I've met on, I think I met her on YouTube, maybe Instagram, I'm not sure, but we are also pen pals now, and she sent me these two books for my birthday, and I was so excited. <laughs> but they are more Francine Rivers books. I got Leota's Garden, and look how pretty that is. Leota's Garden was once a place of beauty where flowers bloomed and hope thrived. It was her refuge from the deep wounds inflicted by a devastating war, her sanctuary where she knelt before a loving God and prayed for the children who couldn't understand her silent sacrifices. Now at 84 years old, she's alone in her beloved garden in ruins. All her efforts to reconcile with her adult children have been fruitless, and she voices her despair to a loving father, her only friend. <laughs> Then God brings a wind of change through unlikely means. One, a college student who thinks he has all the answers. The other, the granddaughter Leota never hoped to know. But can the devastation wrought by keeping painful family secrets be repaired before she runs out of time? <laughs> I'm not ready for that. Maybe I'll do this as like a spring ring, ring, spring read for next year because none of the flowers that I planted this year have bloomed and I'm like devastated. A few of my perennials came up, so like I had like my Sweet Williams come up, which are perennials from last year, and my Flax, which are perennials from last year, but all the ones that I like planted, none of them came up. I'm so sad about it, so I don't know if I just like got bad seeds or what, but anyway, I wanna read that when there are a bunch of flowers around, so. We'll see. And then the other book that she got me is A Lineage of Grace, Five Stories of Unlikely Women Who Changed Eternity. It'll be the stories of Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, Bathsheba, and Mary. So it includes their stories, and then each woman's story includes a six-part Bible study, perfect per for personal study or group discussion. I'm really excited about this one. I also want to get her other one for men, and I'm just, oh, I'm so excited. I, I love Francine Rivers, you guys. I love her. Oh my gosh. This is another actually nonfiction religious book and it's Let Me Be a Woman by Elizabeth Elliot. I've never read any of Elizabeth's books so I'm really excited because I know she has a plethora of wisdom. But my friend Casey on Instagram, separate from my bestie Casey Ray who I've mentioned on here before, this is another Casey, her name's Casey Hayes. Uh, she lives I think in North Carolina but I saw her reading this book on her story and she was just raving about it so I had to get it and then uh, my other bestie Casey also actually loves this book too so it was perfect but I'm really excited to read this one like the first thing that it says on the back is who are you so it'll cover subordination the single life self-discipline masculinity versus femininity one of my favorite subjects the right kind of pride another one of my favorite subjects and what makes a marriage work another one of my favorite subjects so Really excited about this. I, like I said, I've never read anything ugh, by Elizabeth Elliot, but I've seen so many of like her quotes and little snippets and things like that. So I'm really excited to read one of her books. Okay, last few. Up next is one that I got four days ago. <laughs> Stephen and I spent the day together, went to Barnes and Noble, and I got two books. So the first one is Powerful by Lauren Roberts. It's a powerless story. Uh, Powerless was her, I think it was her first novel, it's a romanticy, and from my understanding it's clean, so I'm very excited about that. I haven't read it yet, but it's on my summer TBR, and I'm so excited about it. Everybody seems to just love it, so this is um, a novella, I think, so I'm really excited about it, and that is what Powerless looks like. So, yeah, I had to get it small and cute, and this is a special edition, so I'm super pumped about it. And the other book that I got is one that everybody keeps telling me I need to read. Everybody's so excited about this book, and I'm excited now because everybody just keeps recommending it to me. So, that is Trees of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. Do I know what it's about? No, duh. The only life Tress has known on her island home in an emerald green ocean has been a simple one with the simple pleasures of collecting cups brought by sailors from faraway lands and listening to stories told by her friend Charlie. I love that name. But when his father takes him on a voyage to find a bride and disaster strikes, Tress must stow away on a ship and seek the sorceress of the deadly midnight sea amid the spore oceans what the heck? Amid the spore oceans where pirates abound, can Tress leave her simple life behind and make her own place? Sailing a sea where a single drop of water can mean instant death. Woo! That sounds really exciting. I love fantasy and I love pirates, so I'm super excited about it. I don't know if this will be a this summer book or next summer book. 
let me know if you think that I need to read this right now or if I should wait. I should also mention that I was intending on reading Anne of Green Gables this spring, but I didn't get any flowers and I feel like that kind of ruined it for me. So I don't know if I still plan on reading it this summer. If it's a summer read as well as a spring one, let me know and maybe I'll still read it. And then the very last one that I got, technically this was also gifted to me from John MacArthur's church, but it is The Good Samaritan and the Gospel. Another one of his short booklet books, but very excited about it nonetheless. And oh, I don't think I ended up buying or uh, thrifting um, the gospel according to Jesus. I think I got it from his church also. That's why I was so confused, wondering if I had posted another thrift haul video or not. <laughs> Um, on his church website you can fill out some stuff and they send you books for free if you want. So that's how I ended up getting the gospel according to Jesus. And that's also how I got this one. So now that I cleared that up, <laughs> he has helped me so much in the short time that I've known about his ministry. I feel like him and Paul Washer and Mike Winger are like the three pastors that have really helped me solidify my faith over the last uh, year or so that I've been struggling and getting out of some false teachings. So. Anyway, again, maybe I'll talk about that more in the future. Who knows? It's kind of a long, crazy story. But anyway, so yeah, that is my thrifted book haul. Some exciting stuff. I am really excited to dig into a lot of this. Let me know. Let me know what you guys think I should read first out of all that I've shown you, what I should save for later. I don't know. Like I said, I'm reading Half a Soul right now by Olivia Atwater. And I'm loving it so much. It's a fantasy regency. I think I had mentioned a while ago in one of my videos that I had started it and then I put it down after like 30 pages because my book club and I decided to read the Cruel Prince series, which I will do a recent read sometime and talk about it. <laughs> but I picked up um, Half a Soul after I finished that series and I just, I love it so much. Like I said, it's my first regency and I just adore it so much. Everything is so proper and I love it, but it also sprinkles in cozy fantasy and I love it and the romance in it with no smut and I love it. At least I don't think there's any smut in the rest of the book. I hope not. I'm like three quarters of the way done and it's been clean. So I'll let you guys know, <laughs> but I'm loving it so much. So after that, I don't know what I plan on reading. I think my book book club and I were gonna read Ellen Enchanted, but I'm not quite sure. So anyway, let me know what you guys think I should read next out of this stack and what are you currently reading? What books are you excited to read this year? Cause oh, the year's already halfway over, which doesn't feel real. But anyway, thank you guys so much for being here. And like I said, especially thank you for sticking around even though I'm not posting consistently. I, life. You know, so I do have a few more videos coming though. Like I said, I wanted to do a recent reads and then I wanted to show you guys our new living room makeover, which is very exciting. So there are a few things coming. I haven't completely abandoned you, but anyway, thanks again for being here. I love you so much and I will see you in my next video. Bye.